Hi, this is Janet Eifred. In this video, we're going to look at fractions, percentages and decimals. This is my second video on fractions and percentages. So, let's get started. First of all, we're going to change a fraction to a decimal. If you look at 5 tenths, what do you think that is as a decimal? There is no whole number, so it is 0 and it is 0.5. So we work in our decimal system with a 10 as a base. In other words, we just throw away that bit of the fraction and it's just the top. But it needs to be a 10 at the bottom. So look at that one. What would that be? Yes, 0 0.6. Okay, if you want to pause the video and try this now, you can. In the meantime, I'll just look at this one. What is the whole number? The whole number in this case is not zero, it is two. So it's going to be two point, and then after the point it would be a two. Now let's look at this one. The whole number is five. What will be after the point? 64 because it is a hundred at the bottom. Okay, now just quickly look at this one. If I have 3 over a hundred, what do you think that will be? And the answer is it's not 0 0.3 because what is 0 0.3? 0 0.3 is going to be 3 over 10. In other words, that one would be 0 0.3. Zero three. You need two numbers after the point. Okay. Now, what do we do when we have something like this? We don't have a ten at the bottom. So first of all, let's just change it. Can we change it to a ten at the bottom? What will be easier is a hundred, because we learned in the first video how to do this. 20 times what gives us 100 times 5. So we need to times by 5 at the top as well. In other words, 55 over 100 in other words. What will that be as a decimal? 0 0.55. Okay, pause the video, you do the rest. Now there you go, there's your answers. As you can see, I changed all of them Sometimes, okay, this wasn't necessary to change to 100 at the bottom. It was just 0 0.6. But this will give you an idea of how to do this, I think. Okay, pause the video and check your answers. Now, we're going to look at the ones, first of all, Fraction, percentage, decimals, those ones I want you to remember. Those ones will, which will help you so much if you remember. Now, would you know what is a half as a percentage? Yes. Most of my students know this when they come here. 50% and 0 0.50 or 0 0.5. Would you know what is a quarter? Most of my students know that. That is a half of a half, a half of 50%, 25%, which is 0 0.25. Now to look at this, 3 quarters is going to be 3 times 25, which is 75%, which is 0 0.75. We'll look at a diagram now, which will help you to remember this. Now these two, 1 third and 2 thirds, they are probably the hardest ones. If you go on your calculator and you say 1 divided by 3, you will see you will get a 0 0.3 forever. 0 0.333 and it will go on forever. Now that, in a, sh a short way to write that, is just 0 0.3 with a dot. Okay. And what would that be as a percentage? It would be 33.3 forever percent. Okay, and the two thirds would be double that. In other words, 66.6 .6 forever percent 
or 0 0.6 forever. Okay? Now, before we go on on this sheet, I just want to refer to this. We're just quickly going to fill in here your fractions and your percentages. That is a half and that is a half because the whole thing is one whole. The whole thing is a hundred percent. In other words, half of that is fifty and fifty and fifty and fifty makes a hundred. Now let's look at this one. That is one out of four. We shared it in four parts. One quarter. Each of them is one quarter, one out of four, which is, we shared that one in a half, so half of 50 is 25%. And four 25s make 100%. Let's look at that one. We already know that bit is that bit, so it is one quarter or 25 percent. Now the rest here is those proof, those three added up in other words 75 percent or three quarters. Okay now what do we have here? We have eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In other words that is one out of eight, one out of eight and so on. All of them one out of eight. What would the percentage be? It's basically this 25 we split in half. 25% divided by 2. What is half of 25? Half of 25 is 12.5. In other words, that is 12.5% and that is 12.5%. Together it makes 25%. Okay, so that's going to be an important one. We want to try to remember that one eighth is equal to 12.5%. Yeah? Now at this stage we can look at three eighths. What would three eighths be? If we look at one, two, three, that's going to be 25% plus 125 25% plus 12.5%. That is a fast way to work it out. Otherwise you have to say 12.5 times 3, which is a bit more to do than this. Okay, if we look at 5 eights, 5 out of 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, can you see that that bit is 50% plus 12.5? So we're going to think of 50% plus 12.5%. Okay, and the next one is 7 nights. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Can you see that that is this 75% plus 12.5? 5. 75% 5 plus 12.5, okay? So those two together make seven eights. Those two together make five eights. This would be a fast way for you to work this out. Now, just to confirm, there you can see all of it written neatly, as I cannot write that neat on this whiteboard. Okay? Now we're going to go back where we were. Now you might understand better a half, a quarter, three quarters, at this stage you can fill in what is one eighth, can you remember that? What is three eighths? Work it out by 25 plus 12.5 and so on. You fill in those ones. What are we going to do? Okay, let's look one eighth. You already know now as a decimal. It is going as a percentage is 12.5, so as a decimal it's 0 0.125. You already know that. Another way to work it out I want to show you. That is 1 divided by 8. 
in other words one divided by eight and from my division videos you will know the first number always go under the bus stop one divided by eight eight goes in one it cannot zero remainder one eight goes in ten one one times eight is eight so there's two remaining eight goes in twenty twice two times eight is sixteen there's four remaining it goes in 45 so that is another way to work it out so how do you think you can work out one se seventh yes you can say that is one divide seven in other words one divide seven and we know after the one we can put a point and zeros okay it's your turn pause the video and do the rest there you go there's your answers please check them now I want you to just look at one third again we said that one third is let's look at one third we said that that is 0 0.3 forever okay it goes on forever and we said as a percentage before we said it's 33.3 forever percent Hopefully, at this stage, you can see that 0.3 is one third. In other words, we can also say it's 33 and one third percent. Yeah, and the same goes for two thirds, which is double the one third. In other words, double double 33 and a third is 33 plus 33, 66. One third plus one third, two thirds. Okay. Okay, pause the video if you still want to check your answers. We've already done that. Now, it's your turn to practice between a fraction percentage decimals. Now, these are the ones we know. You've learned them. So you can try to do as many as you can here. And then I'll go through a few with you. This one would be thinking of adding a zero there and there would be 70% which is 0 0.7. What would that one be? Write it as equivalent of a hundred. Okay. And what would the top be then? 13 times 5, 10 times 5. 50, 3 times 5, 15, so in other words, 65, which is 65%, which is as a decimal 0 0.65, yes. Okay, now pause the video, you do the rest. There's your answers, please pause the video and check them. Now, I wonder if you knew how to do this one. We had to follow our golden rule, which I showed you in the first video. We had to simplify 18 out of 40. We simplified that. Let's just half it. They both even. It's easiest. 9 over 20. And then we can go to 100. How do you get from 20 to 100? You times by 5. 9 times 5, 45. In other words, 45%. Did you know this one? 21 out of 40. Best way I think to do it is to just rewrite that. We just add zeros. In other words, what does it mean? What do we do? We times both top and bottom by 10. Now we can change to 100. How do you get 400 to 100? It goes smaller, so you have to divide. You have to divide by 4. In other words, you divide by 4 at the top as well. Now, what is 210 divided by 4? How do you do that sum? We follow your, our bus stop method, as I showed you in the div division videos. 4 goes into 0. 4 goes into 21. 
five as a reminder to the five reminder one four goes in ten two okay now we sit with a reminder so we need a point and a zero and a point that reminder was two four goes in twenty five so that is how you got your fifty two point five percent and your zero point five two five Okay, pause the video if you still need to check your answers. Now, there you go. Write down a fraction between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. So first of all, you can try this. See if you know how to do this. Think about this first. Pause the video. Now what is 0 0.5 as a fraction? Let's just change this to as two fractions. That is 5 over 10, isn't it? That one is 6 over 10. Now is there a fraction between 5 over 10 and 6 over 10? Because we don't get something like 5.5 .5 over 10. We can rewrite that as 50 over 100. It's the same thing, isn't it? And we can rewrite that one as 60 over 100. Now, can you see what fraction will be between 50 and 60? There's loads of them. 51 over 100, 52 over 100, and so on. Okay, so you can pick any one. Let's pick 55 out of 100. That is a fraction between those two decimal numbers. Now, if we did pick this one, we would see that we can simplify it. So, if you divide both of them by 5, you would get 11 over 20. We should always give our fractions as a, in the simplest form, because then you know you will get full marks for that question, okay? Okay, pause the video, you do the rest. There's your answers. Please check them. Remember, there will be different answers. This I the answers I gave here is just one of the answers. But you should be confident at this stage with knowing which answers you could give there. Okay, pause the video if you still want to check that. Now, next, we need to order decimal numbers. Now, I've seen students really struggling with this because they just look at this and think they can write the answer down. Now, sometimes you can, and if you're really good, you can do that, and there's no problem with that. What I do suggest is, if you're learning, if, you can, if you're making mistakes with this, do it this way. Write it in columns like this, with your decimal point lined up. 2.9 0 0.901 0 0.83 1.801 2.102 Okay? Now let's do look down the first column. Can you see there's a 2 and a 2, so they're the same size, so we know that they're going to be the biggest. Let's look down the next column. There's a 9, so can you see that this one won? It's number 1, it's the greatest one. Okay, so that one is out then. Obviously then this one is next, because if we look down the first column, that's our next one, number 2. Okay, which one would be number three, do you think? Let's look down here. The next greatest one is one. In other words, that would be number three. Now, this is the only two left. Which one is the greatest here? Let's look down here. That is zero. So we have to go to the next column. That is a nine and a eight. Nine is greater than eight. In other words, this one comes next for and then 5. Now what you might find helpful is to put zeros in there, okay? That might also help you to see, to compare them. 
Now in an exam you would not leave your answer like this. You would go and write out the numbers as I will show you now in the answer sheet. So try to do the next one on your own. Pause the video. Okay, and there you would write down your ordered list in order like that. Okay, pause the video to check your answers. We need to look at lowest common multiples because we need to compare fractions and for that we need to know about lowest common multiples. So let's work out what is the lowest common multiple of 3 and 4. We're going to look at multiples of 3 which is basically the times tables of it. It starts at the 3. Multiples of 4 it starts at 4, 4, 8, 12 and so on. Now if we look down these lists we will see that there is a 12 and there is a 12 and there is a 24 and there is a 24. So they are common multiples of 3 and 4, 12 and 24. Now which one is the lowest common multiple? The lowest of these is 12. Now you try to do it for 6 and 8. Pause the video. Okay, there you go, there's your answers. Please pause the video and check. Now we are going to compare fractions. There's two methods to do it. The method one is just to change them to decimals. So if we have to compare one eighth to two thirds, we would think one eighth, can you remember what that is as a decimal? What is it as a percentage? 12.5%. In other words, as a decimal, 0.125. Can you remember what's two thirds as a decimal? One third is 0 0.3 forever. Two thirds is 0 0.6 forever. Now we want to compare that with something with three numbers there. So we can write it like this and think it go on forever. We could have rounded it, you might see that sometimes. But really, just use your common sense here and think that is bigger than that. It doesn't really matter what this last number here is. It's either a 6 or a 7. Okay, in other words, we can see that two-thirds are greater. Another method to do that, and sometimes they will specify which method you can use, because they want to see, can you calculate equivalent fractions here? We're going to think, we need to make our bottom number the same for these two, so we can compare them easily. In other words, our bottom number needs to be the lowest common multiple of 3 and 8. And if you would work out the lowest common multiple, I'm not going to do that, you have had enough practice. Lowest common multiple will work out to be 24. And then you would think, 8 times what gives me 24 times 3? So in other words, 3. You're going to think 3 times what gives me 24 times 8, in other words 2 times 8, 16. In other words, which one is greater there? The 3 over 24 or the 16 over 24? And that is the 16 over 24. In other words, 2 thirds is the greatest one. OK, your turn. Pause the video. There you go. There's your answers. Please pause the video and check them. Now, I suppose this is the hard one. My students usually find this quite tricky. Write this. Three quantities in order of size. 0 0.35, 30% one third. Now what I personally prefer is to change them to decimals. 
there's already a decimal what would that be as a decimal 0 0.3 or 0 0.30 as there's two, two numbers after the point it's handy if there's two numbers after the point one third can you remember what's that as a decimal it's 0 0.333 forever so let's, let's write down two numbers after the point now we can compare 35 30 and 33 and what does that give you which one is the largest it's this one so that would be number one number two number three okay now in an exam you will not use the numbers you will physically go and write the answers as 0 0.35 and then you would write a third you would write it as it was given originally and then you would say 30 percent yes okay pause the video you try the rest Now there you go, there's your answers. Let's just quickly see, did you know how to work out one sixth? You could have said one divided by six. One divided by six, yeah? And followed that. Those ones you should have known write down a decimal between that one is 0 0.9 isn't it in other words 0 0.90 so it can be anything between that 0 0.91 0 0.92 0 0.95 and so on so there's a lot of numbers there this one is 0 0.75 in other words it can be 0 0.76 0 0.8 0 0.9 anything there there you are to follow you know how to do this this one i mean this this is an interesting one because if you don't want to work out one divided by seven like we worked that out you can maybe get away with not doing it by thinking for instance one divided by three compared to 1 divided by 5 compared to 1 divided by 7 then 1 divided by 7 will be the smallest if you have one pizza you divide it by 7 people you will get less than if you have one pizza divided by 3 people okay so you will think those three I can order like that and then you can compare the rest either with decimals or percentage or even equivalent fractions okay pause the video if you still want to check there's some more practice by this time you know how to do this if you have to work out only the smallest and the largest numbers try to work cleverly like I just showed you before with these ones you can compare the one quarter one fifth one six very easily then you can compare the rest either with making your bottom numbers 30 or something like that you don't have to work all of them out don't spend too much time on this okay post the video you do the rest there you go there's your answers remember these ones you could compare with equivalent fractions with a denominator of 30 these ones you can compare with a denominator of 24 equivalent fractions so every time you would do this differently which is why this is such a hard topic there isn't just one method I can show you that will work every time Ev depending on what is given you have to use your common sense and then just try to follow the best method then okay pause the video if you still want to look at the rest now I'm just testing you here testing if you still remember everything we've done and if you can write down these 
mentally if you know them by now and please try those ones. Okay, pause the video. There you go, there's your answers. Please pause the video and check. Now this is also the end of this video and please come back to watch my third video on fractions, percentages and decimals where I will mostly look at working out a fraction of a number, a percentage of a number, percentage increase, decrease. Okay, thank you for listening. Please download the workbook for practice.